Hello, lovelies. Welcome to this episode of Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer All. I look forward to sharing my channeled message with you today. And if you love it, please remember to like, share, review, and subscribe. Marcus Aurelius said, Accept everything, even if it is disagreeable, because it leads to the health of the universe. I've been thinking about this. Sometimes things suck. <laughs> Sometimes we shut down and we don't want to listen. Why do we do this? Why do we fight? Why do we push so hard to be right, to be validated, to be understood? Why on some days is it that we simply cannot listen? Why do we continue to disagree when we can literally hear the voice within us saying simply, silence, silence yourself and listen? Why do we think that others don't have something to say worth hearing, that it can't prompt us to learning and evolution? Even if it's not the words they say, but something it activates within us. Why do we think that quiet, thoughtful, true contemplation, true openness and willingness is some kind of submission or guilty plea or weakness when all it really truly is is teachability? I say it's largely because we have accepted the idea that humility is lowly, that it is lowered, darkened, self, that is lack of validation. And yet, if we take the word apart, if we take the word humble apart and redefine it as what it truly means, when we look back at all the times and places and ways and stories in which we have been instructed to be humble, we will fight less while succeeding more. We will learn that everyone in every arena is both teacher and student. We will embrace this sacred education we will appreciate all there is within every moment, within every experience, everything. Albert Einstein, one of my favorite quotes ever. I speak to everyone the same way, whether he is a garbage man or the president at the university. He says, I speak. To everyone the same way. I'd like to add to that. I listen to everyone the same way. I listen. We must remember, beloved, that the goal is not to outdo other people. The goal is to outdo who we were, not to outshine them. And with this in mind, we can easily, effortlessly with great anticipation, remain humble. With this in mind, we will listen and we will learn. Humility means one thing simply, that we are teachable, that we recognize that every person has something to say that is valid, that could teach us even if we are not expecting it every child, every moron, <laughs> everyone. Recognition that at any time, in any moment, we could learn something truly valuable to our path will keep us present, aware, and enlightened. It will speed up this whole process.
the greatest misuse of humility, in my opinion, is in religion. In the Bible, it talks about being humble a lot. And people have been taught for antiquity, since antiquity, that to be humble is, you know, to lower yourself and consider yourself not worthy. But I disagree that this is what this word is and what it means. And quite frankly, there are many others who agree with me. And when we start to think about all the different ways in which the word humble is used and interject this new meaning, this real true meaning, it changes everything. Let's start with the dictionary, <laughs> right? That's a good place to start. Let's start there in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. The first two definitions of the word, the first is not proud or haughty. Now, if you look up haughty, which is fun to say, <laughs> by the way, it says, showing superiority or perceiving others to be inferior. So not perceiving others to be inferior is what humility is, is what it means to be humble. Yes, that. Why is it that we perceive others to be inferior? That's what we're doing when we think they don't have something to teach us. That's what we're doing when we don't want to listen to our partner, our friend, that stranger, whoever, say something because we have already deemed it useless. We're missing an opportunity. The second definition is offering a spirit of deference. Deference means respect or value deserved by someone else. If we approach every person, every conversation, every conflict, every moment of joy, every everything, giving that individual, that moment, that circumstance, no matter how good or, thank you, Marcus Aurelius, uh, disagreeable <laughs> it may be, then we are being humble. Being humble does not mean we do not know that we are wise. It does not mean that we don't know that we have something to offer to others. It doesn't even mean that we don't know maybe that we're better educated, more experienced, or more open-minded than someone else. It doesn't mean that. It means that we are giving them the value they deserve. We are listening. And we are remembering that every minute of every day, we are in life school. We're here to learn. We're here to grow. And so let's take a minute and let's look, okay? When I was studying the ministry, I remember being told that, well, quite simply, that to be humble meant to be teachable. And that started me on a lot of changes in my thinking. So throughout time, I have read lots of things about this. Um, there's even a website called TorahClass.com. Um, recently, I was reading a little bit on there. And I think it's quite interesting to look at the root words that actually have been translated to the word humble. There's a word that I may be butchering the pronunciation of, but it's um, anav, okay? It is a Hebrew word that is very commonly translated to humble, poor, meek, or lowly. And yet it doesn't really mean that. It means to have submission, trust, and obedience, and the willingness to have reliance upon the wisdom coming from somebody else. Most commonly in these stories, God. But when we remember that the universe, that God is within each of us, there is wisdom, right? And there's some quote, right? The wisdom of thieves. Yeah, that's a real thing. So let's think about it. Let's Think about some of these quotes, right? My soul shall make her boast to the Lord. The humble shall hear and be glad. There's like a few ways to translate that, right? We tend to assume that it means the people who lack pride, right? The people who don't 
appreciate who they are, will hear the soul. That's not exactly what I'm reading, right? When the soul realizes that it is the universe seeking to understand itself, it will be teachable. It will hear the lessons and be glad that it did. Yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. The meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. What if it says the teachable? The teachable shall inherit the earth, right? Metaphysically, to inherit the earth means to understand the purpose of human existence. Eat and be satisfied. That's not just about food, beloved. We will learn from the world around us. We will be satisfied. It says the humble ones increase their joy. The teachable increase their joy. We're aware every minute that we are learning and growing and evolving. We will be joyful. We will have that inner joy and calm, right? The thing, <laughs> I tell some of my, my business ladies that, you know, when things are on edge, just do Kegels in your business meeting. If you don't know what Kegels is, I'm going to make you Google it. <laughs> but what it gives you is this sense of like a naughty little secret, right? I have information that maybe you do or do not have, and it makes me joyful, right? When I know, when you know every minute that this could be the moment in time that you learn something that is a deal changer, then you will carry around that smile, that thing inside of you that is joy, that is light, it will be yours. Yes. Let's pay attention. Let's learn. A great man is always willing to be little. That's Ralph Waldo Emerson. A great man or woman is always willing to be little, is always willing to be quiet, is always listening for the wisdom that comes from others. Humility, like the darkness, reveals the heavenly light. That's Henry David Thoreau. Think about it. Humility like the darkness reveals the heavenly lights. Teachability like the darkness. When we block out everything else, when we relieve ourselves momentarily of our inner dialogue and our desire to compete with the competition, participate in one up whatever, when we quiet it like the darkness, the heavenly lights, the wisdom. And get in. And maybe it is the words being said. Maybe it is what you are seeing occur with your beautiful eyes. Or maybe it is what you learn about yourself in reaction to the wisdom of the situation or the human being. You know, I was thinking about when you take a compliment right? Or someone gives you a gift, right? We say all the time, mostly because it is ingrained in us that it is something to say, we say, oh, I'm humbled. I say that sometimes. I say, I'm humbled by your compliment. I am humbled by your patron contribution to this show, right? Yes, I am humbled. But let's be clear, I don't mean I am made less. How does that make sense? I am not made since I am made more and I am more teachable than ever because of your support and your confidence in me. When you see good in me, I open myself even more to what I can learn from you, from others, and from the universe itself. You can do this same thing. Is humble a compliment? Yeah, it is. 
people use it in a way that doesn't mean they say, you know, Abraham Lincoln came from humble beginnings and they mean that he was poor. Well, sure he was. But that's not really what humble means. Humble means an inner state of being. It means not flaunting. It is an element of teachability. In my regular day-to-day life with all the sucker moms and everybody else, my friends, mom friends and things like that, my family, right? I don't go around flaunting my education. If they bring up something spiritual, I don't break in and say, oh, let me tell you what the truth is. I listen. I don't flaunt what I know or what I do. I am teachable. I say, hmm, I wonder what I could learn. What might I hear from the mouth of this other human being that can make me richer and wiser in my understanding? And you can do the same. We do the same. You can do the same with the ignorant around you. And when I say ignorant, I just mean those who don't already know. And of course, let's get practical with our partners, with our children. These are ways that we must behave. We must be aware always. We must quit filling in the words for other people and listen deeply to what it is they have to say. Blessed are the teachable, for they shall inherit the wisdom of the earth. Blessed are they with a teachable spirit, for they shall see the face of God. They shall see the universe, the wisdom, the beauty, the unique creation and incarnation of each and every individual of you, of me, and of everybody else. The teachable will increase their joy. The teachable shall see this, hear this, and be glad. Blessed are the teachable, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Theirs is the right here, right now of it all. The fact that all of the knowledge and beauty of the universe is right here in this living, breathing, walking, moving plane of human existence. That all is divine order. That all is is divine timing. That we are right where we are meant to be every moment and we should not take it for granted. Because we are learning if only we open our eyes and our ears. Blessed are the teachable because their awareness of life school is constant and enduring. And when we hold that all the time, we are winning. We are growing. We are evolving. We are awakening. We are taking full advantage of our turn here on the earth so that we can learn and grow, graduate, and move on to the next thing. Let this be your goal today, this week, and every day for the rest of your human experience. I am humble. I am present. And I am here listening and learning from everyone around me. Let's hold that affirmation at the forefront of our minds. I am listening and I am learning from every individual that I am blessed to share space with, to share breath with, and to share life school with. Until next time, beloved, namaste. Hi, my name is Tessa. I've been a regular client of Jen's for over four years now. I found her at a point when I really needed her, when my life had hit rock bottom, which of course, as I realized later, was no coincidence. 
Her wisdom and support have been invaluable to me, and I honestly cannot even imagine what kind of life I'd have now, or the person I'd be now if I'd never met her. She's helped me learn how to rebuild in positive ways. Her guidance over the years has taught me how to live more purposefully and joyfully than I probably ever otherwise would have known how to do. She's helped me learn to see and understand the world and other people in new and more loving ways, and to also embrace and appreciate who I am. Jennifer's such a treasure, and I love knowing that others benefit from receiving her guidance as well. I recognize that this podcast and its messages may not be for everyone, but for many of us, probably those of you listening, I truly believe we're very fortunate and blessed to have a voice like Jennifer's that's available to us through this podcast, where we can access and listen to her encouraging messages anytime we want to. I know I do. I'd like to ask each and every one of you to please consider supporting it in any way you can, whether it's through financial contribution, spreading the word to others, providing positive reviews, or any other way you can give. Remember that every little bit counts. Thank you for listening to and supporting Jen, someone who I'm also very grateful to be able to call a dear friend. I owe her so much gratitude for making me a better person, mother, wife, and friend. Thank you. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today for this episode of Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. If you haven't already, come out and find me on social media. And if you're inspired by the podcast, please consider clicking that little green patron button at the top of the screen. Here, you can help keep us growing and flowing, and you can gain access to what I call Jen in real life. That is patron-only content. If you're wanting to learn more, I recently introduced educational sessions specifically to address people's questions that come up around the podcast. These are the only sessions available to new clients, and you can find details in the About section of my Facebook page. I want to send each of you light and love, clarity and wisdom, and know that whether you realize it or not, there's a little brunette with a podcast who's got your back. Until next time, beloved, namaste.